Why do you think the the National Party's Afrikaans policy failed compared to the British? I mean, you look at us even today. Uh, I was discussing this with Joost mm-hmm. and asking him how he feels. You're an Afrikaner gentleman. Uh, I come from the Zulu nation. I'm meant to be speaking is a Zulu. You're meant to be speaking Afrikaans. But here we are speaking English. Mm. In June 76, when the students were marching, they were marching against Afrikaans as a, as a medium of instruction. They've never marched against English. So how did the British get it right? And how did the National Party maybe get it wrong to get people to adopt Afrikaans? You, you, you must um, afford me some uh, prejudice against the British, given the history of... of please please go for it. <laughs> things, the Anglo-Boer War, sure. but also the Anglo-Zulu War. Yeah. Um, so so we, we, we share something there. I don't know how they got about doing that um, uh, uh, because if if any nation was 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 arrogant, yeah, we we had a problem. We Afrikaners had a problem with arrogance in the twentieth century. I think yeah. we 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 know it and we look it into the eye and and we try to in some ways address it sure. and in some ways we perpetuate it. <laughs> but 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 still, at yeah. least um, one one. But the. The way in which the British just dominated mm. um, and just uh, uh, hold themselves up as the norm yeah. to which we all the world should be uh, assimilating um, to. Assimilating to. I, I can't understand that 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 it's accepted. Yeah. Um, we have just rejected that. We we had that. You know, at the end of the of the um, Anglo Boer War, yeah. uh, Kitchener said, "We are all friends now." Let's join in the joint <laughs> project of, of British uh, colonialism. Yeah. And, and the Afrikaners said, no, thank you. Yeah. We will build our little world. And there's a, there's a beautiful um, metaphor for, yeah. for that by our great poet N.P. van Beeklow. Mm. He says the world is like, an, like a symphony orchestra with a number of, of, of um, uh, instruments playing many melody lines which flow into each other. And if there's one little flute that's uh, absent, yeah. you will miss something. Yes. So even if your language is a small language, it, it may be one flute. Yeah. It adds to the, to the richness of, of the symphony of, of, of humanity. Yeah. And for that reason, it should be looked after. It should be taken responsibility of. I once wrote a very controversial piece about how the apartheid government could have done things better mm, mm. to a point where even today we'd still be living under apartheid. Um, part of it being the language policy. Forcing things onto people doesn't work versus Obviously. maybe incentivizing. Yeah. If you had told uh, black kids, if you pick up Afrikaans, we give you an extra 10%. Mm. If you pick up Afrikaans, these are the jobs that are waiting for you. And then you just let them choose. I think it would have been a, a better option. I think they were probably ill-advised at the time. The please. Now you know what um, uh, uh, they were not able to imagine two things at the same time. Yeah, a common world and a, a, a definite identity. Yeah, um, and you need some cultural, physical, cultural spaces for that yeah. identity. But you need not try to be an island. Yeah. And 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 uh, that concept of of uh, separate development at that time was to the exclusion of a common world. Yeah. Of common areas, which was a fact. Yeah. But it was a non-recognized fact. Sure. Um. And 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 that's where that uh, um, imagination just fell short. Yeah. Of 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 addressing. But sorry, I, I interrupted no, no, you on no, that. No problem, sir. Um. The apartheid government built a lot industrialized a lot yeah i think today um, a lot of black people are starting to tone down on their anger we're starting to increase on our anger of a black government and how they're failing and they're destroying i mean i'm from newcastle in kzn Mm -hmm. and isco was a very big company it was acquired by metal it's being destroyed now and it's closing down we look at what's happening with transnet obviously escom load shedding Mm -hmm. um I'm, i'm not sure how cecil is doing but Maybe partly because of embargoes and sanctions, but the Afrikaner government was very imaginative, and people like um, Hendrik van der Beyl, yes, very instrumental in industrializing the country. Where do you think we failed? Um, and I mean, even with the success of Aranya, how do we get 
great Afrikaans, Afrikaner engineers, innovators too, maybe come back and, and help us carry on building. Now we have to rebuild because things are destroyed mm, mm. and to ensure that they transfer skills on, on non-Afrikaners to be like, look, whatever happened during apartheid happened, but we, we want to build this country with you. I, I believe the attitude amongst Afrikaners are, are extremely willing yeah. to share and to, to participate. Um, uh, and they had a cold shoulder for, for tens of years yeah. uh, now, um, which is a tragedy because that's why we lost so many to, to other destinations in the world. Correct. I think the key has something to do <clears throat> with community responsibility. Okay. with identifying what you are doing of, of 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 really taking ownership of a project mm. even if it's iscor or, or um, escom or the old railways yeah. which was an empowerment instrument for many families of which i still know yeah um whose children uh, uh, ranked highly in academic or professional uh, circumstances but but that's where they came from yeah and and that uh, that that industry stabilized them and um, made it possible to 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 go to new levels. Yeah. Um, so, I would think <clears throat> the the kind of South Africa that opens doors for the future mm. is one in which we are a community of communities. Mm. And if that community logic and the the energy that it unlocks uh, becomes part of our daily lives yeah. <clears throat> and of our activities, um, new new possibilities will open. Is the future of education private? Mm. You look at Afri Forum and Solidaritet, they've built Soltech, brilliant skills yes. training. <clears throat> you guys have a training college, very focused on hand skills. And it seems our government and maybe a big part of, of the black community has almost got that old Afrikaner idea of we just want to work in an office mm. in front of a computer. Mm. But if government is not going to be building these skills institutions, is the future maybe looking into building private institutions? It seems to me that the the state as a super institution is going down. Yeah. And I'm not saying there will not be any state anymore, but but we, we are readjusting in many ways. And I think that privatization of, of, of key areas, which we never imagined could be private, yeah. is, is part of the future. So yeah. we are just adapting to circumstances and it opens new possibilities. Yeah.